If you're an investor or a trader, you should know that central bank rate decisions are one of, if not the most market moving events for stocks, bonds, commodities, and currencies. Most central banks meet eight to 10 times a year, though some will meet quarterly. And when they meet, investors pay attention. A central bank doesn't have to change interest rates to move the financial markets. Oftentimes what they say, their guidance, is far more important than what they actually do. Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Lean with BK, and today we're going to talk about the number one best way to trade central bank rate decisions. But before we do that, there's a few things you need to know. Number one, central bank rate decisions are important, and some meetings are more important than others, and some central bank rate decisions are more important than others. For example, the Federal Reserve's monetary policy announcement will almost always be more market moving than, say, the Bank of Canada interest rate decision, because 80% of all currency transactions involve the US dollar. Also, commodities like gold and oil are priced in dollars, and equity markets around the world will respond or follow what the U.S. equity markets do after the Federal Reserve's rate decision. The Bank of Canada's monetary policy announcement, on the other hand, the impact will only be on the Canadian dollar and Canadian assets, so it's much more isolated, whereas the Fed announcement will have an impact on all of the major cur currencies as well as you know, markets around the world. Secondly, some meetings are more important than others. Four times a year, in March, June, September, and December, the, Fed, the Federal Reserve releases its latest economic projections and its dot plot. The European Central Bank and the Bank of England does the same. Four times a year, they'll release their economic projections, and those meetings are more market-moving because they give the market a look into where the central bank thinks the economy, growth, spending, inflation, unemployment is headed. And so that you know, allows them to, to start thinking about what comes next, if anything at all. Third, some of the major central banks like the Fed and the ECB hold press conferences after the initial monetary policy announcement. And those press conferences can be even more market moving than the actual rate decision and the interest rate change. So you should always check the economic calendars to see if there's a press conference after a specific meeting. My favorite is dailyfx.com. You know, I'm partial to them because I helped build the website and you know decided what were the elements that should be included. And one of the big um, philosophy was that we want the economic calendar to be as comprehensive as possible. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about trading. The most important thing are expectations. Does the market expect a rate hike or not? Finding out to what is priced in the market is in many ways one of the hardest things for most retail investors and traders to do. For the Fed, we have the CME Fed Watch tool, and I actually include the link in the description of this video so that you can you know, click on it and see what is priced in for the Federal Reserve at any point in time. Now, for other central bank, it is much harder. In those cases, Google is your best friend. A day or two before the central bank rate decision, look up Google News articles and see if you can find some relevant articles by reputable news sources, like some of the major financial news uh, agencies, and see what they're talking about in terms of what the central bank is expected to do, as you can see here. Trading central bank rate decisions can be risky, but you can improve your chance of success by focusing on specific opportunities. The first is right after the rate decision. If there's a surprise, that surprise can be tradable, especially if there's no press conference that day. Take this Canadian dollar Japanese yen chart, for example. The Bank of Canada surprised the market with a 25 basis point rate hike in the month of June. CAD yen shot up 60, 70 pips in, the month, in a matter of minutes. You could have jumped right in to this trade for a quick opportunity, but the smarter move would be to wait five minutes to make sure that there isn't any type of crazy reversal. And if you traded rate decisions before or watched the charts around the time that this happens, you know that there could be some very quick and aggressive and unexpected reversals after rate decisions. But if the move holds, get in and don't be greedy. 20 to 40 pips on a short term post data trade is enough in my opinion. If there's a follow-up press conference, then you need to be even more conservative with your target, maybe only 15 to 20 pips. The second more lucrative opportunity is to wait for after the press conference. Usually when there's a press conference, the central bank head will read the prepared statement, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Then um, the uh, press will give, be given the opportunity to ask questions, and usually the most important questions are asked in the first 10 to 15 minutes. So 20 to 30 minutes max from the start of the press conference, we kind of have a good sense of what the central bank wants to do going forward and what the message they want to leave with the market is. And then we get to see the real move of the day happen. 
In this chart from the March 2023 Fed meeting, the Fed raised interest rates by 25 basis points. This move was widely anticipated, which is why you see dollar yen drop instead of rally after the rate increase. 30 minutes later, Fed Chair Powell begins his press conference. And about 20 minutes um, in, he suggests that you know, rate hikes could be near their end. So dollar yen sold off and it remained under pressure throughout um, the rest of the New York session into the Asia Open, at which point traders in Hong Kong, Tokyo, and Singapore wake up, they turn on the screens, they read the news flow, see the Fed outcome, and they dive back into the same trade, and they drive dollar yen down another 90 pips. I always wait for the next market open, the next cycle for a continuation opportunity. As you can see in this dollar yen chart, we had a zip sell signal formed with a, where we have a white candle with a red background. And that happened off of the Fed announcement. And it remained in the zip sell zone below the indicator line in the red area throughout um, the session and into the Asia Open. So at the Asia Open, which is when I trade, I sold for a quick ride lower. And you know that's the way that I think is the best way to get into the central bank trades. So as we look forward to a number of rate decisions, jumping right in can provide some quick profits. But my number one favorite way to trade central bank rate decisions is the Asia Open for the Federal Reserve, the ECB, and the Bank of England rate decisions, and the New York Open for the Reserve Bank of Australia, Reserve Bank of New Zealand, and maybe even the Bank of Japan rate decisions if there's any type of action. I always prefer to wait for the next cycle, next market open. If you watch this long, I didn't want to bore you with the details in the beginning, but I also still felt that this is important information to explain. So I want to spend a few minutes talking about why interest rates are, central bank rate decisions are so important in general. Now I could do a whole 30 minute video on this, but um, the short answer is that almost everyone borrows money, businesses, individuals, the rich, the poor, and interest rates determine how much it costs to borrow. Lower interest rates makes businesses and consumers more willing to borrow and spend. Higher interest rates makes it more expensive and less and discourages people from spending. Interest rates is the primary tool the central banks use to encourage or discourage spending. Now you may wonder why in the world would the central bank want to discourage people from spending? The answer is that if the economy gets too hot and people over borrow to spend, that could create a really big problem because it can drive up prices, inflation, and when prices get too high, it takes a very long time. It can be a big challenge to bring down and descend. And unfortunately, that seems to be the problem that many central bankers have been struggling with for the past few years. So hopefully you understand you know, why interest rates are important. You know, my favorite way to trade central bank rate decisions. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, subscribe, and like you know, the video to our, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Smash the alarm bell for updates. Let me know what other videos want and other topics you want me to cover. And if you want to learn, um, if you want to trade with me and you learn to trade with me, check out the links in the bottom of this video in the description. Thank you very much.